Welcome back to our studio practice. In this training session, I would like to personally walk you through a series of the interesting deformation functions for a polygon mesh. Let's open up the Maya application now and click on the deformation shelf. You should be able to see 11 distinctive deformation functions in the shelf. Later, I'm going to show you the characteristics of a nonlinear band deformer, the use of lattice, and the nonlinear twist functions. To demo the use of deformers, we would need some polygon mesh for the demonstrations. Go to the polygon shelf and uh, interactively create a cube. Next, let's alter its input via the channel box and uh, try to reposition it to the origin. Once you are done, let's duplicate the mesh into three parts. With one of the polygon mesh selected, go to the deformation shelf again. First of all, I would like to introduce the nonlinear band deformer to you. Try to click on the functions to activate it. You will notice the selected polygon mesh has turned into a magenta color. If you press the shortcut key number 4 for switching to wireframe mode, you will see a straight curve situated in the middle of the mesh. Let's press the shortcut key number 5 to restore the shading display. Then, go to the channel box and click on the band inputs. Click on the curvature label and then try to click and hold with your middle mouse button and drag it horizontally. You would see the mesh begin to magically bend uniformly. Everything looks quite fun, isn't it? The band deformer is a useful tool, not just for modeling, it can be used for animation as well. To make a mesh bend nicely and smoothly, you will need more subdivision edges for it to deform. Let's select the other polygon mesh and try to insert some edge loop to it. Once done, switch back to the object mode and apply the band deformer again from the shelf. Click on the curvature label, pick a nice viewing angle and uh, click and hold your middle mouse button again, drag it horizontal once more. By turning off the wireframe display now, you will able to see and compare between these two mesh. The mesh with a more subdivision shall bend nicer as the extra edges give rise to no change. Now let's select the curve of the band and activating your move tool. Try to drag along the Y axis then. You will notice the mesh deform accordingly to our new translation input. Now try to activating the rotation tool and rotate it freely. The change of rotation angle will influence the deformation as well. Go to the channel box now, reset the rotation angle back to zero. And let's change the low bound of the band input to zero. See, the mesh only deformed on the upper half. If you turn off the high bound with a zero input, the band deformer would not have any influences on the mesh anymore. Let's set the high bound back to one again and activating the move tool and lower down the band handle.
change your envelope to a lower value, say 0 0.5. You will notice the envelope input is actually a form of a multiplier to our current uh, curvature input. Please do feel free to experiment on the nonlinear band deformer in your own accord and try to realize its potentials. It could be a handy function when the time comes. Now let's move on to other deformers. First, select the undeformed mesh and duplicate it. Next, let's insert some vertical edge loop. Switch back to object mode. With a newly duplicated mesh in selections, let's activate the flare deformer. Switch to wireframe display. Go to the channel box. Click on the flare input and uh, scroll down. Let's select the curve label. Use a middle mouse drag. You will see another form of deformation. Feel free to experiment with all its settings from the channel box input. From here, you could see the attributes of a low and high bound work about the same, just like the non-linear band. Just a quick note, by now you should be able to identify all the deformer inputs are actually a form of a construction history. We could delete the history by go to edit and delete by type with history. Once done, you would no longer have the access to the inputs. And you could choose to delete the deformer as well. Try this. Select this non-linear band handle and hit delete. Your mesh will instantly reset back to its original state. Let's undo these actions. Now, I would like to show you one more deformation function, the lattice. Select this object now. Go to the shelf, click on lattice function. You will be able to see some sort of a cage that covers the mesh. Let's change its shapes inputs increase the divisions of the cage. Then, right mouse button click and hold, choose lattice point. It is quite similar to the word disease. Grab these points, feel free to manipulate it with the transform tool like move or rotate. Once done, just delete the history and you shall have some abstract looking mesh. You will need to rework on its topology with the interactive split polygon too if you want to make this as a game mesh.
next, let's select and duplicate the undeformed mesh again. And let's explore the nonlinear twist function. Gear to its input, tweak the start angle. You would have an interesting twisted shape. Let's go a little bit more extreme, duplicate a clean mesh again and add some division to it. Apply the twist deformer's end. Everything looks quite fun, isn't it? To learn more about the deformer's behavior in Maya, I would encourage you to visit the Autodesk Maya's documentation manual. Here, you will get more exposure about the functions and its operations. Okay, this would mark the end of our training sessions. Hope to see you again.